Planting a young tree out of a pot is comparatively straightforward, but when it comes to advanced trees, it's a lot more complicated. And here's John to show us how it's done. I'm at Wandong, just over an hour north of Melbourne. This is one of the many areas devastated by the Black Saturday bushfires, but there are many volunteers here to help brighten things up. This is all that's left of this property owner's home. But they're planning to rebuild on this block that's been cleared over here. But of course, when they move into their new home, it would be really nice psychologically and physically to have one really healthy, green, shade-giving tree that they can enjoy. Now this is an advanced tree and I think it'll do that job perfectly. That's an eight-year-old oak. It would normally cost around about $1,800, but in this case, it's been given by a charitable group who are looking at greening up fire-ravaged areas. Hi, Phil. Good day, John. Great to, Good see, to see you, you again, John. Yeah. Phil Kenyon is an arborist, and he's overseeing this planting. Look, I think one of the things that's often missed here, John, is the root system, and, and these trees have been grown with a system that really concentrates on developing a well-structured root system that's not girdling and going round and round the pot. This is an air pruning container. And these little holes in this container mean that when these tiny roots get to the edge, they go through the hole and they are actually pruned by the air. Right. You buy a tree with a well-developed root system, it just grows so much faster and so much better. All right, well, let's start putting this one in over here. Well, Phil, clearly to accommodate that tree, you've had to dig a pretty big hole. We've been very particular about the hole, John. The hole is dug at least three times as wide as the root mass of that tree, at least three times. And it's to the shape of a wok, a Chinese wok. And we're not going to improve this soil. We're going to use the soil that's on the site as the sole sort of backfill, are we? We're not going to change this soil at all. The tree has to adapt to this soil type. And if you do try to do something to the hole, you quite often actually are counterproductive. Adding other material to a hole can mean that the tree could end up waterlogged. It's very important to use the site soil back into the hole when you plant the tree. How do we measure how deep we have to make the hole? We'll use the tape measure. And look, we've got 30 centimetres of depth here, which is the same as the root plate on the tree that we've purchased. To plant a tree of this size, you need help, and Phil has plenty. Can you tip it a fraction further in? Thank you. I'd just like to do a little bit of pruning there, so we might uh, we just get started on that. Well, it prunes those woody roots off, and you get nice new young root growth coming away from the, those points. So, Phil, why are you doing this? Would it be a major disadvantage not to do so? We don't want it to end up a big, girdling, woody, knobby root system, John. We want nice, young, vigorous roots exploring the, the soil. Once you get to these advanced trees, it's, it's not like pulling a little shrub out of a pot. It, uh, it takes a bit of muscle and, uh, and a bit of know-how. Do some vertical cuts down the side of that root system also, just to make sure we don't have root problems. Yeah, that's, so that, again, is another measure. To another one. the girdly yes, roots. Yes, yes. Keep going, Damien. That's great. Oh, and what are you doing now, Phil? Yeah, I'm just fluffing these roots out, John, just to make sure I get good contact between the roots and the, and the site soil. They are there, touching the site soil. They don't have to break through a barrier. And I notice you've been putting a sort of like a little dam wall around the edge of this. Yep. And that's going to catch the water and hold the water so that we get a really good full watering for the whole of this hole. You don't want to cover that root mass of the original nursery pot with any site soil. That makes it very difficult for water to go into this root mass. What about the contentious issue of staking? I wouldn't normally stake. We think we'll put some stakes on, but tie it fairly loosely so that the tree doesn't become totally dependent on the stakes. But if there's a very severe wind, they'll help hold it till the roots take over. But the watering is one of the most important and vital things, not to allow this root ball to dry out. And certainly as it goes into its first summer, we'll have to make sure it gets watered once a week. So, Phil, this tree's been donated. 
Yes, look, a few people have come forward with some donations of other trees and we, we'd be very pleased to help anyone else who'd like to uh, donate a tree to somebody who's had their garden destroyed by these fires. If you water it next summer... I think uh, Steve and Monica, who had their home here and are going to rebuild, they should be able to enjoy this tree. The forest here is not totally dead, but it's certainly pretty tough going at the moment. And to see something alive and green and the autumn colour and then in the spring the buds will be coming out, it, it really gives them hope, hope for the future.